morning and we are so thankful to have you all here. I'm Pastor Karen Boga and welcome to the Shepherd of the Church Church. Um, this is Earth Day and we celebrate all of the goodness that comes from our Earth, um, all of the greenery as well as creatures as well as us. Uh, we give thanks this morning especially for the Care for Creation team who has decorated the sanctuary with reminders of creation. I think they did a wonderful job this morning, so thank you to them. Um, today, at the end of worship, we will be blessing our Garden of Grace. Um, unfortunately, it's raining. Otherwise, we would plan to go outside and be with the garden. And instead, this morning, we are going to probe recess from the sanctuary into the fellowship hall. And from there, we will bless the garden. Uh, if there is by the slightest chance of break in the clouds, we'll go outside. Seeing all of the green on top of wood stuff right now, that doesn't look very likely, but just in case, we will head outside. So we ask you to join us and bless the goodness that comes from our earth. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise as you are able. Whoever we are and wherever we come from, we share the reality that this earth is our home. So we come at this moment to remind ourselves of the truth that the ways in which we live within this earth home affect for good or ill the home itself and all that dwells within it. Open to the moment, therefore, and open to one another, we come before the mystery of life. We join with the earth and with one another to bring new life to the land, to restore the waters, to refresh the air. We join with the earth and with one another to renew the forests, to care for the plants, to protect the creatures. We join with the earth and with one another to celebrate the seas, to rejoice in the sunlight, to sing the song of the stars. We rejoice with the earth and with one another to create human community, to promote justice and peace, to eradicate poverty and inequality, to remember the generations yet to come. We join with the earth and with one another. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and the renewal of all life. Amen. Let us confess our sins against creation to our Creator God and to one another. Holy God, you cause our enemy to fall on the just and the unjust. Sometimes we are part of the just, and sometimes we are part of the unjust. You have given us incredible gifts of water, soil, air, plants, and animals that sustain our lives. When we are ungrateful, forgive us. When we forget to take care of these resources, forgive us. When we pour these resources and keep them from others who need them, forgive us. Pour out the Holy Spirit upon us to refresh us and renew us, so that we can use the gifts you have grown within us to care for each other and for our heart. By the mercies of our Creator God and by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God said, 
Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth, earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant, yielding seed, that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude, on the sixth day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Alright, I don't see any children, but I do need a moment of silence for you.
As it read, the astronauts reflected that the planet Earth never looked so beautiful, so mysterious, and so fragile. The creation narrative that we read from Genesis 1 was written during the 6th century when the Israelites lived in exile in Babylon. Their neighbors, the people of the ancient Near East, worshipped other gods, gods that were very different from the god of the Israelites. And not surprisingly, their creation stories differed from Genesis 1. In the Babylonian creation story, for example, the gods created through conflict. Gods battling with gods for supreme power and rule. At one point, the god Tiamat was split in half to form the earth and the sky. From the blood of the god Hindu, humankind was created to serve the gods. They would build homes for gods, temples, and grow food so that the gods would have a life of ease. This was a transactional relationship, one of the powerful and the powerless. Those created were used by the creator. And this is so very different than the creation story of our God. When we read the creation story in Genesis, whether we are reading from the pulpit this morning or hearing the reading while Apollo 8 orbits the moon, we're called to pause a moment and stand in awe at this very creation of God, at this very, very good creation. This is a creation of love by a God who is present and active in the world. This is a creation of relationship, a creation in which God orders things and sets everything up to work together in relationship with each other. The creation in which all of us are created in the image of God as very good and responsible creatures, respected, valued, and honored, so that we can work together with God to care for the earth and all of its creatures. Unlike the ancient Near Eastern gods, God doesn't need us. Instead, God wants to be in relationship with us. God says, you are important to me. I want to be a co-creator with you. Co-creator. Wow, that's a really powerful image. We are created by God to be a co-creator, to care for the earth and all the creatures as God has ordered, to work alongside God in relationship with God, partnering with God to care for this good earth. This image of co-creator is in stark contrast to the message we often take from the creation narrative, that of God commanding humanity to have dominion over all creation. Dominion calls not for domination, but instead calls us to respect, love, and care for the good creation. Daniel Mabeler states that this command for dominion summons us to wise stewardship, rather than self-indulgence, to leadership within the commonwealth of creatures, rather than a license for exploitation. We humans have no absolute right over nature. Instead, we are entrusted with its care and protection. We are called to care for the earth as God does. As co-creators, this also means that God is still creating. The earth and all the creatures is still in the process of becoming. But take a chair, for instance. That chair is no longer dependent on the one who made the chair. If the creator of the chair goes away, the chair is still a chair. After a chair is created, it's fixed. It won't keep getting better. It won't ever evolve into a couch or a television. It will always be a chair. God's good creation isn't the same as a chair. Creation, us and all creatures, are dependent on God. God, in an ongoing relationship, continues to create us, to sustain us, to transform us. We too then continue with God the process of creation. We are actively engaged. Our decisions about creation truly count 
for both God and creation. Of whom much is given, though, much is expected. As I reflected on these texts this week, I couldn't get out of my mind the pictures of the destruction in Ukraine and Gaza and Israel and Russia and so on and so on. The things built by humankind are destroyed, yes, the earth and its creatures are destroyed too. The ground is parched, not a bush or a tree or a blade of grass in sight, just dirt. Miles and miles of swirling and blown dust. There are no longer places for God's creatures to access clean water, plant life-sustaining crops, or even escape from the burning sun or the freezing night. When the bombing stops and the screaming finally stills, there is only silence in the world around. God's human creatures are not experiencing the goodness that God intends, but instead are dying by the tens of thousands. Sin, evil, destruction are destroying God's good creation. Would the crew of Apollo 8 look down and describe the earth again as beautiful and so mysterious or only fragile? I pray that somehow from this chaos, God along with us can create goodness again. I wonder, too, this week, whether we stop and stand in awe of this creation of God, this good creation, no, this very good creation. Although it was intended for laughs, and I did laugh, I was dismayed to watch comedian Jimmy Fallon's interviews with those on the New York street last week who answered the question, what is the eclipse? Their extreme lack of awareness of this incredible creation God has made, it troubled me. This is the creation that we are all called to see, to stand in awe of, to be curious about, and to care about. We are co-creators. This is our creation, too. Although our work is never, ever done, I give thanks that in this small corner of God's good earth in Woodstock, Georgia, we try and take seriously that call of good co-creator. We, the sheep of the good shepherd, hear that call and we grow gardens of grace, planting okra and tomatoes, squash and cucumbers, feeding in God's creatures. We keep waste out of landfills, batteries and electronics, eyeglasses and medicine bottles, protecting our water sources and our land. We see the goodness. We share the goodness. We advocate the goodness. We are the goodness. So today on this Earth Day, I will give thanks that despite who we are and what we might have done, God doesn't give up on us but redeems us and continues to entrust us as co-creators. I pray that God will continue to open our eyes to see all of creation, learn about creation, and care for creation, co-creating with God to bring the goodness intended, to bring God's beautiful earth to its fullest potential. It will be so.
for those who practice these skills, that they may be wise, visionary, and compassionate in their work. We pray. Amen. For the creatures and the people of earth whose lives and death have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet, we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace one with another.
Christ. With in mind, you call us to believe and bear fruit. In these gifts that we offer here, these signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ and the true mind. <coughs>
this morning we have regular bread as well as gluten free wafers. The darker liquid is wine, the lighter liquid on the inside is grape juice. Um, we also have um, the pre packaged communion kits, which have the grape juice as well as a gluten wafer in it. Um, those are available from the ushers. And if you prefer a blessing, I would be honored to do so. Please come forward and cross your arms. The table is now ready, and all are welcome.
rise as we are May by your blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. You have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. You may see the announcements. Join us for Coffee with Council following this service and come back for our annual birthday bash with a pizza and a salad for lunch. This is a great opportunity to sit with someone new and enjoy some fellowship with one another. This will take place just before the meeting today. And all of our caring members are wearing orange bags in honor of Earth Day, so if you have any questions, you can contact or locate them. It'll be hard to miss, I promise. <laughs> Set the May 4th aside for our Good Shepherd Outdoor Spring Cleanup. We will be working on sprucing up our exterior spaces and can use many hands to make the work look light. And as a bonus, the Girl Scouts will also be hosting a craft show that morning in the Fellowship Hall. So you can do a little shopping, maybe for Mother's Day, and help put up around the church grounds. Continuing prayers for our Pomperman students as they journey home from the Ranch today after a weekend learning about the Ten Commandments. A new ladies' night sign up for May is available for the Wango Sanitas restaurant today. That is in May, by the way. I don't want to say it's today. It's not today. It's in May, but you can sign up today. VBS is set for June 17 through 21st. We have a large display in the Fellowship Hall near Sign Up Central with explanations of volunteer roles along with some of the items to purchase to help defray the overall cost of running our program. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And if you want a new directory photo, this will be the last week that we have a green screen of the wall set up with a camera in the Fellowship Hall. Donna will be taking the photos after this service. Get your picture taken if you need an update or if you need to be added to our photo directory. And there's so much more going on, so be sure to check out your Sign Up Central, our website, or the Sheet Buzz. If you need to get on the Sheet Buzz list, just drop us your email and let us know. Also, we are going to be recessing out since I believe it is still raining. Yes, it's still raining. Okay. Um, so join us as we recess out and head into the fellowship hall on this last hymn so that we can bless the garden of grace. Please rise now as you are able. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.